This girl thought it was a fish, but on looking closer, she ran immediately. Alicia had no idea her discovery would bring her closer to her father than ever before. She was knee-deep in the warm shallows. The late sun flickered on the water like broken glass when she saw it. Something silver was twitching in the sand. She thought it was just another mullet stranded by the tide. But as she reached down, the creature unfolded six tiny legs and scuttled sideways like a crab. Alicia gasped and stumbled backward. She sprinted toward the rocks where her father was surfacing from his dive. Miguel was still wading out of the surf when Alicia burst toward him, waving her arms like a gull in distress. Papa, I found something. It has legs. He blinked salt water from his lashes and chuckled softly. He loved how she could be so filled with childlike wonder, even though she was almost 16. Legs? Fish don't have legs, Mija. She tugged his sleeve toward the estuary. They do now. Miguel followed her up the beach. Alicia knelt by the spot where she dropped her bucket. She pointed with glee. The creature inside shimmered with a coppery sheen, and its fins fluttered like torn ribbons. And sure enough, from beneath its belly, six slender limbs were feeling the air. They were jointed, alive, and purposeful. Not just meaningless appendages. Miguel crouched and studied it. His smile faded into quiet wonder that mirrored hers. Well, I'll be... Alicia watched with a pounding heart. Is it dangerous? He shook his head. No, sweetheart. Just... different. Together, they carried the bucket back toward the shack. The tide was rising and the water lapped at their ankles. Miguel set the bucket down in a patch of shade and leaned on his knees, still staring. I've seen something like this before, he said slowly, years ago, far offshore. But I never managed to catch one. Alicia's eyes widened. So it's real. I thought maybe. He smiled. Nature always finds a way to surprise us. As the sun dipped low, the fish, if that's what it was, rested at the bottom of the pail. Its delicate legs tapped softly against the tin. Alicia crouched beside it completely mesmerized. Miguel watched her with quiet pride. Tomorrow, he said, we'll take it to someone who can explain it better than I can. She asked, someone who studies fish? He nodded with a smile. Someone who studies everything about the sea. Miguel nodded toward the horizon. If anyone knows exactly what it is, it's them. The oceans kept its secrets long enough. That night, as Alicia lay listening to the waves outside, the image of the strange fish played over and over in her mind. Its glinting body, its tiny walking legs, and the feeling that she had just uncovered something ancient and extraordinary. Tomorrow couldn't come soon enough. By sunrise, Alicia was already dressed and waiting beside the truck with the bucket resting on her lap. The little creature shifted lazily in the shallow water, its fins glowing faintly in the morning light. Miguel joined her, coffee in hand, and gave a little nod. Let's go see what Dr. Kingsley has to say. The Marine Research Center sat a few miles down the coast, built on a small bluff overlooking the ocean. Inside, the air smelled faintly of salt and disinfectant. Rows of tanks glimmered under bright lamps. They contained coral, shrimp, and even a small octopus blinking from behind a rock. Alicia's eyes went wide. Papa, it's like an underwater zoo. Miguel chuckled. Only here, the animals are the teachers. Dr. Kingsley was a gentleman with gray hair that stuck up as if the sea breeze followed him everywhere. He peered into Alicia's bucket. Then he smiled with unmistakable excitement. Ah, a sea robin. What a beautiful specimen. Alicia leaned forward. Sea robin? Dr. Kingsley squinted to see better. Yes, they're not common here, but sometimes the currents carry them north. He motioned for her to follow him to a tank. Inside, several similar creatures were gliding along the bottom. Their fins were like orange lace. See those legs? They're not really legs at all, just modified fins. But they work like legs. The fish can walk, dig, and even taste with them. Alicia blinked. Taste with their legs? The scientist grinned. Exactly. Those little bumps you see are like taste buds. They help the fish find food hidden in the sand. Miguel smiled at his daughter's wide-eyed fascination. I told you nature likes to surprise us. 
Dr. Kingsley turned toward a computer monitor and brought up an image of a fish skeleton. The gene that gives them those limbs is called TBX3A. It's the same one that helped animals long ago grow proper legs. You could say these fish are reminders of our own beginnings. Alicia pressed her hand against the tank and watched one sea robin shuffle across the sand. It was graceful in a clumsy sort of way, like it hadn't decided whether it wanted to swim or walk. So, they're really old? She asked softly. In their design? Yes, said Dr. Kingsley, but still learning new tricks. As they left, Alicia carried the bucket carefully. Her mind still buzzed with questions. The fish inside seemed calmer now, almost at home. Miguel looked over and smiled. Well, what did you think? Alicia grinned. I think the sea just showed me one of her best secrets. He patted her shoulder. Then maybe it's time you meet one of her best storytellers. The truck rattled along the coastal road. The windows were down and sea air poured in. Alicia balanced the bucket on her knees and watched the creature sway gently with every bump. Where are we going now? She asked. Miguel smiled. To see someone who spent more time underwater than on land. They stopped at a faded dockside cafe. Its wooden sign creaked in the breeze. An old man sat outside mending a fishing net. His hair was white as sea foam and his face was mapped with a lifetime of sun and salt. Tomas, Miguel called out. I've brought someone and something you'll want to see. The old diver looked up. His eyes were bright and mischievous. Miguel, and this must be the daughter who asks too many questions. Alicia smiled, only about the sea, she said. That's the best kind of curiosity, Thomas said. He leaned over the bucket and whistled. Well now, a sea robin. Haven't seen one of these in years. You know about them, Alicia asked eagerly. Know about them? He laughed and set down his net. Child, these little creatures were our guides. When I was diving for pearls, I'd see them walking across the sand, leading me toward the oyster beds. We believed they were messengers of the sea. They showed us where to look, if we listened with respect. Alicia's eyes sparkled. So, they helped you find pearls? Sometimes, Thomas said with a wink. But sometimes they reminded us that the ocean doesn't always give. It lends. He tapped the side of the bucket gently. The old divers said that when the sea trusts someone, it sends a sea robin to their path. Miguel chuckled. And when the sea doesn't trust you, Thomas frowned slightly. Then you don't see one at all, or worse. You see only the storm. Alicia's head was spinning with questions. Do they get any bigger? She asked. Thomas said, like with all other creatures, they will if the conditions are right. Specimens of over five feet have been caught. And oddly enough, this happened in lagoon or estuary tributaries, not in the deep ocean as you'd expect. Alicia sat quietly with the wind tugging at her hair. She looked down at the fish. Its small limbs were folded and resting peacefully. Something inside her stirred. It no longer seemed strange or frightening, but familiar, almost friendly. Thomas smiled while he watched her. Remember this, Nina. The sea doesn't speak our language, but it does speak, and every creature in it carries a story. As they stood to leave, the old man added, Next time you find something unusual, don't run. Ask what it's trying to tell you. Back in the truck, Alicia gazed out at the shimmering horizon. For the first time, the ocean didn't seem endless and distant. Instead, it felt alive, like an old friend whispering secrets beneath the waves. They reached home just as the tide began to rise again. Alicia set the bucket gently near the edge of the water. The little sea robin rested quietly now. Its fins fluttered every so often as if sensing its freedom was near. Miguel crouched beside her. You know, he said, I was about your age when I first saw one of these. Alicia was surprised. Really? He nodded. Back then, I thought I'd discovered a new species. I told everyone in the village, but nobody believed me. So I decided I'd become a diver, just to see what else the sea was hiding. She laughed softly. And did you find more like this? I found enough to keep me curious. Enough to remind me the ocean isn't just work. It's wonder. He looked at her then. For the first time in a while, she noticed his eyes were warm beneath the weathered lines of his face. You have that same curiosity, Alicia. Don't ever lose it. The waves whispered gently against the shore. Together, they tilted the bucket to let the water spill out. The sea robin hesitated for a moment, 
then slid into the tide. Its little legs touched the sand one last time before it disappeared beneath the surface. Alicia watched the ripples fade. Do you think it remembers me? She asked quietly. Miguel chuckled. Maybe not by name, but the sea remembers kindness. They sat for a long time in comfortable silence. Seabirds wheeled overhead, calling to one another in the wind. Finally, Miguel spoke again. Next week, like I promised, I'll take you diving. Properly, you can see the reefs yourself. She screwed her face into a knot and punched him in the shoulder. About time, don't you think? As the last light slipped away, Alicia reached for her small notebook and began to sketch. First, her father's face, then the shimmering tide, and the strange little fish that had brought them here. At the top of the page, she wrote in neat letters, My first discovery. A few quiet weeks passed. School began again, but Alicia's mind still wandered to the estuary. Each afternoon, she'd slip away after homework, notebook in hand, tracing the coastline where she'd found the sea robin. The bucket sat empty at home now, a quiet reminder of the day that changed everything. On one particularly calm evening, she returned to the water's edge alone. The sky was soft and blue, and the sea was glass smooth except for the rhythmic ripples of the outgoing tide. She sat down on a driftwood log, pulled out her notebook, and flipped through her sketches. There were drawings of seaweed, crabs, shells, and of course, the fish with legs. Where are you now? She whispered to the sea. Alicia walked barefoot into the shallows. Something about the air felt familiar. Maybe the scent of brine. Then she saw it. A faint shimmer beneath the surface. A small shape moving deliberately across the sand. Her heart lifted. It was the sea robin. Or maybe another just like it. With the same copper shimmer and the same gentle rhythm of tiny limbs walking across the ocean floor. Alicia crouched. The fish stopped a few feet away and balanced on its legs like a creature from another world. Then, to her surprise, it didn't swim away. It simply stood there, tasting the sand with its delicate appendages, unbothered by her presence. Smiling, Alicia opened her hand. Resting in her palm was a small pearl. It was the one her father had given her after his last dive. A gift, she murmured, lowering it into the tide. For the sea that keeps surprising us. The pearl rolled from her fingers and landed beside the fish. For a moment, the creature paused, as if it were considering the offering. Then it dipped its head and brushed the pearl with one of its legs. The gesture was so graceful it almost felt like an acknowledgement. Alicia laughed softly and blinked back tears. You're not so scary after all. She stayed there until the horizon turned dusky rose and the tide began to rise again. The fish drifted slowly away and vanished into the deeper blue leaving nothing but a faint trail of stirred sand in its wake. When she finally turned back toward the shore, her father was standing in the distance, waving. Miguel had come looking for her, but when he saw her smile, he only raised his hand in greeting and let her walk the rest of the way alone. As Alicia reached him, he tousled her hair. See, the sea always sends its friends back. She asked, do you think it liked the pearl? Miguel threw his head back and laughed. I think, he said, that it already gave you one in return. And together they watched the last shimmer of the sunset fade across the water, where mystery and peace met perfectly, just as the sea had always intended. The next week, Alicia's teacher gave the class a writing assignment. Describe something that changed how you see the world. While the other children groaned, Alicia's pencil moved almost instantly. She didn't even have to think. Her essay began, I thought it was a fish. But on looking closer, I saw something more. She wrote about that first afternoon by the estuary, how she'd panicked and run, how her father had smiled instead of scolded, and how a single creature had opened up an entire world of questions. She told the story of the sea robin, the scientist who explained its legs, and the old diver who called it a messenger. But most of all, she wrote about what it felt like. That moment she realized that the world was still full of mysteries waiting to be understood. When she finished, she reread the last line aloud to herself. The sea taught me that not everything strange is scary. Some things are just waiting for us to look closer. That evening, she handed the paper to Miguel. He read it silently while his weathered thumb traced the words. By the time he looked up, his eyes shone with quiet pride. You wrote this? Alicia nodded. 
Do you think it's okay? He smiled. It's perfect. You didn't just see a fish, Mija. You saw a story. Miguel closed his eyes for a moment, listening to the rhythm of the waves. The ocean keeps its secrets, he said softly. But sometimes, it shares them with those who pay attention. Alicia leaned her head against his shoulder. Then I'll keep listening, she whispered. What's the most amazing thing you've ever discovered by accident? Share it with us in the comments. We'd love to hear. For now, we're out of here. Catch you in the next video.